Hi, Martin from Jisk here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about this thing and this thing. We're going to look at how we can use a Raspberry Pi, a very cheap and hackable little computer, to do just a tiny fraction of what the human brain is capable of. This isn't a real human brain, this is a squishy plastic brain, but you get the idea. So stay tuned, there's lots more to come. So today we're going to pretend that we want to make an artificial brain. Not like this squishy one, put that away. We're going to use a Raspberry Pi. So if you've not come across it before, Raspberry Pi, very simple, cheap little computer, runs Linux, can do a lot of hacking around with it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to connect a little wire up here and this wire will let us make a circuit. It's just a cheap and cheerful version of a switch. And when we connect these two together, it'll be like pushing a button. Then we're going to add a camera. And the camera is because we're going to try looking at things and get our artificial brain to tell us what they are. So put the little camera in. And then we have a, a loudspeaker, and a loudspeaker is there to tell us what it thinks it's seen. Let's see if I can remember which way the USB goes in. That's good. And then we need a power source. So I've got this nice little battery. This Raspberry Pi is so cheap and cheerful, it uses so little energy that you can run it off the battery. So isn't that good? So let's look at what we've got here. We can see, do some thinking, and we can talk and tell everyone what we've seen. So what should we start with? I've got this handy screwdriver here. I wonder if it can recognize the object. Let's see. Screwdriver. Hey, not bad. Something else. Handkerchief. That so isn't a handkerchief. <laughs> Let's try turning it around this way. Ballpoint. And then let's try something that a computer brain ought to recognise. I need to get it a little bit further away. What do you think that is? Mouse. Very good. So how did that Raspberry Pi thing actually work? What's going on behind the scenes? Well the answer is, it's using a piece of open source software that was originally developed by Google called TensorFlow. And TensorFlow is full strength machine learning. This is the technologies that the internet giants use behind the scenes to help personalize your web services and your apps and all sorts of other things that you do online. TensorFlow is really good at recognizing things and it's been trained on something called ImageNet. ImageNet has over 14 million images which have been classified so that we kind of know this is a ballpoint pen and this is a battery there this is a screwdriver and so on and when you have millions of data points then it's possible to use these machine learning technologies to create something that really does look a bit like an artificial intelligence and in fact Google have been very good to the community because it turns out it takes an awful lot of compute power to create a machine learning model to do something like recognize the images in ImageNet. So they've made the models, some reference models, available to download. And that's what the Raspberry Pi is doing. It's downloading one of these and then it's using it to check the image that it sees with a camera against the ImageNet database. This is all possible 
thanks to a guy called Sam Abrahams who got TensorFlow working on the Raspberry Pi. Sam also literally wrote the book on TensorFlow, so he's a bit of an expert. Um, I've also got to thank Libby Miller from BBC R&D, who essentially created the crib sheet that I used to put this together. So well done Libby. And Dan Brickley from Google, who produced uh, a little tweak to the image classifier script that comes with TensorFlow to make it speak. So before that, I might just have printed something out on the screen. But when it speaks to you, it just seems more visceral. So we've seen a little bit about what we could do with uh, these machine learning techniques um, embodied in a piece of software like TensorFlow, even on a cheap and cheerful little computer like the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi is not going to replace human brain anytime soon. And there's a particular reason for that, which is you're not going to train one of those models in a realistic amount of time on one of these. It's going to take a lot more compute power. But you can use the models other people have made, and you might be surprised at just what you can do with them. And I'll let you think about that. Goodbye for now.